Hello, this is Scott from Git Butler. Um, what I want to talk to you about in just a little bit is to talk about something a little bit more complicated uh, that happens in virtual branches. Um, you may have a question of what happens when there's merge conflicts, right? It's really nice to be able to drag things around when there's no problems, but what happens when there's merge conflicts? So I want to show you that real fast. What we have here is we have this, this change that we were showing you where we have this nice purple background and we, you know, we can take that on, take that off. Now, what if we have an upstream branch? Um, th this shows you a couple different things. One is previewing remote branches, so branches that your coworkers may have. And in this case, we have a branch that somebody else has done that's changed the background as well that will conflict with what we have. Um, and it's called best background. And so if I click on any of these branches, it will give me sort of this overview of what that branch has. Um, I can also keep notes in here. Um, if I want to, and then again, it'll just sort of save those. So if I have a to-do list or something like that, I can keep it here instead of sort of in a pull request that be upstream. So let's say that I want to go in here and I want to apply this remote branch and see what his, what, you know, in this case, Scott's branch looks like. I can go in here. I can see what this branch looks like from the commits. I can even click on these and look at the individual commits. If I want to go, go to GitHub and I can hit apply. And if I hit apply, what it does is it creates a new virtual branch that is, uh, put into my working directory so I can look at what this person's doing. So this is what the remote branch looks like. Um, now, it will tell me I can't put my branch in here because they conflict with each other and you can't have multiple conflicting virtual branches at the same time. So I'll show you how we how we deal with that. But um, the cool thing is if I was working on something else, um, let's say I have too many browser buttons here. So uh, if we look at our, at our website, there's three buttons, right? Um, and it's put this actually into the, the remote virtual branch. So I want to move that into my own virtual branch and say three buttons. Um, and if I unapply that, I can see there's four buttons here. Um, and I want to apply my three button change, right? So this is sort of a bug fix, I suppose. Um, and I can keep that completely separate while I'm looking at this best background. So if I take out their best background, I just have the default one. If I add in my background, I have my beautiful background, um, but I can't have them both at the same time. But you can see when I don't have either of them, they're both they're both mergeable, right? I can I can apply either of them cleanly. When I apply one, uh, that is, it checks all the rest of the virtual branches and say these ones are not applicable cleanly, right? So I go okay. Um, let's let's go ahead and and take all of these up, but it it keeps it completely separate from my three button branch, right? That that stays separate. So now let's look at, let's say that they choose their best background and I want to sort of merge it. This is when merge conflicts happen. It can only happen with upstream changes. So we're going to go, actually the easiest way is to just look at this, click on that, that takes you to the branch. We can look at this pull request. Let's go ahead and merge this in. So there's one, right? I can take this out now. And if I refresh or, or, you know, if I wait a few minutes, it'll do it in the background for me. It says, Hey, there's, there's actually some, some work upstream here. So if I, if I go back and I look at, at Git Butler now, it will notice that it'll pull down and say, Hey, there's some upstream changes. Um, it'll pull them down and it'll notice, okay, that, that remote branch you were looking at that isn't yours. It was somebody else's. It's been integrated, right? It's merged. Um, and so I can say, mm, okay, Let's go ahead and, and merge that, that upstream work. I want, to see, I want to be up to date with production. That's in production now. And so now I still, again, I have my three buttons branch here, uh, but I can see a different status on my virtual branch that has my background change in it, which is it's going to introduce merge conflicts if it's applied. So let's go ahead and apply it and uh, introduce those merge conflicts. So now I go in and I can see it's actually taken out my three buttons branch automatically because I can only work on one branch when I'm when I'm resolving conflicts and it says okay I'm going to take all your virtual branches out temporarily you can put them back if you want to but I'm going to introduce merge conflicts um, into your working directory and I need you to solve them and it marks which files are are solved and so you can see the, the commits that we've had we have some local ones we have the one we pushed up um, but it says hey this this app.html is conflicted you have to resolve it um, and then you have to commit, and that creates a, a merge for you. Now, uh, let's go in here and see where it's in app.html. So we're going to go into app.html, and we can see, yeah, of course, this is a merge conflict. Let's go ahead and fix it. 
So let's, you know, I don't know. Let's change it to a nice, beautiful, whatever color that is. It's a purple. So we're going to change it to this nice purple code, which kind of actually matches our button here. So the other cool thing that you'll notice is you don't have to run git add on each individual file as you're fixing the conflicts. Like normally you have to say mark is resolved because that needs to run git add on the index. For, with us, we don't have to do that. We just scan the, the hunks that we have. And as soon as we don't see the merge conflict markers, which we can do fairly well because we're putting them in and so we can tell when you take them out. Um, but as soon as we don't see those conflict markers, we automatically mark it as resolved and all you have to do is commit it. So if I go in here, and I commit this. I commit this. Now it adds in this commit. And if we actually look at this at this branch, since we're doing sort of an advanced one, I'll show you how to look at this branch. Um, you can see that it actually has two parents. Um, so the way that, and then we can, if we want, we can add our three buttons back, right? And so now we have, again, our three buttons and we have our merged sort of background. And we can push this up to ours, and that opens a pull request that modifies main right that modifies the main branch um, with the merged product of of these two these two things so how do you actually see kind of what it's doing what is what is git butler doing in the background and this is the last thing that, that we'll go over real fast now if we're if we actually look what git butler's done is it creates this branch called git butler integration and it's it's a, a normal branch so it's a normal ref um, you can find it in refs heads um, but if you run git log on it, uh, it will kind of explain what is happening, right? And what's happening is git, its normal mechanisms, the index, the head, branch mechanisms, it can't really deal with having multiple branches simultaneously. So if you have multiple branches like this and you have commits on them that are separate and pushing and pulling separately, how do you deal with that? So what we're doing is we're actually creating a new commit that is the the merge product of all of those things together um, so that your stat and we're updating your index so that your git status actually looks correct in IDEs and things like that. Um, but you can look at this, right? And we can see there's a three buttons branch that's applied and there's a background change branch that's applied. And we can, if you've committed to it, we give you the branch heads, um, but we also create these refs. So if we actually wanted to see what this commit looked like, for example, we could run git log on this commit, but we we give it uh, its own ref. And this is in dot git slash refs git butler background change. And we keep those refs up to date um, so that everything's reachable. So, um, and and you can also see in here, we've kept whatever you were on when you started git butler up, we, we, re we record that so you can get back to it if you need to. Um, but in this case, let's look at the branch that we're actually creating, right? So if we say, git log one line graph, we can kind of see what this particular commit looks like here. Um, and you can see that it's a merge product, right? So it's this merged upstream. Uh, again, if we go to Git Butler, we can, we can see that this is, you know, merged upstream, better color background change. And then this best background change is actually a merge um, of origin main and what we were working on. So we're, we're recording actually the merge product in there so that it has a better merge base. Um, so again, you can access any of these branches if you want to individually, we'll, we'll write all the refs out for you. Um, but it's, it's generally easier, uh, to, to obviously do things in Git Butler. And if you move away from this, if you check out, say, you know, main or something, stash what we were working on, check out main, and we go back to Git Butler, it'll say, hey, you've left our integration branch. Did you really sort of mean to do that? Right. And I can say, nope, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back back to what it was, and I can go back and, and sort of, you know, redo these, these particular branches if I want to. Again, we've been using this for a while. Um, it's a little bit new. If you're interested in joining our alpha, please contact us. We'd love to have your help. We'd love to have you test out this stuff. Uh, go to our Discord channel um, or email us at hello at gitbutler.com, and we'll get you into our alpha, and you can start playing around with this. And this is only the beginning. There's so much more interesting stuff to come. So thank you very much.